All right, hey, hello, buenos dias, everybody. Uh, uh, I think you know the routine with some of these videos. I have to turn the uh, camera on uh, from the other side and then uh, and then rush over here to uh, to, uh, to to my chair. Uh, but yes, uh, I've got another video for you guys uh, today, and this time I want to go ahead and say a few things about the uh, California Mission SLO assignment. This is the, your first major assignment that's due in, in, in the class, and the due date is coming up on Friday, September 19th. That's the uh, beginning of the second half of, of the class. And uh, this assignment is going to be worth 10% of, of your final grade. And uh, unlike a couple of the other assignments, that is the EBSCO review and the book review, there's not going to be any late uh, grace period. So that in the case of the book review and the EBSCO pa paper, uh, there's a one-week grace period in that uh, I'll give you one week to submit those papers, uh, but there'll be a one-grade deduction. Unfortunately, you're not going to have that luxury for the, for the mission system assignment. So definitely to get the uh, full credit, make sure you get that in to me by Friday, September 19th at midnight, or precisely 11.59. And uh, uh, one, other, one other note I, I want to say, say about this is that unlike the EBSCO book and U.S.-Mexico war reviews in which you all submit as files in, uh, in either Word, so, which is, of course, DOC or DOCX format, RTF, PDF, or, or, or Apple Pages. Um, for the admission system SLO, you write your answers directly in, directly into Blackboard. Don't send me any files. Uh, no, no attachments, no uh, Word documents, no Apple Pages, none of, none of that stuff. So much like what you're going to be doing with the discussion boards in which you write your answers directly into Blackboard in the discussion forms, you do uh, pretty much the, the same process uh, with, the, uh, with, with the SLOs. And I'm going to show you a, a little bit more on, on how to do that after I talk a little bit more about what the assignment is all about, what the objective is, is about, and all of that, uh, all of that fun stuff. Okay, well, without further ado, this is going to be one of the few videos in which you're not going to be uh, seeing, uh, 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 seeing me. Um, you'll see me quite a bit more, of course, in some of the, uh, those, uh, those weekly preview videos about the reading. So without further ado, let me go ahead and tilt the camera over to, uh, to Blackboard. So we'll take a look at both Blackboard and the assignment, uh, the assignment worksheet, and then, uh, and then th that'll, that'll wrap things up. All right, so let's tilt the camera over. Okay, wait for the... Uh... Okay, there we go. Okay, wait for the focus to come in, and let me adjust my, my chair here, and then we're ready to go. All right, then. So uh, here's the assignment section, everybody. Of course, this is what, what, what you see when you go into the assignment section, and you get the information about not just the SLO, but also the EBSCO review, the book review, and down, if you scroll on toward the bottom, that, of course, is where you find information about the U.S.-Mexico war assignment. Um, and remember, with all the assignments, you do have a, a PDF a worksheets, which give you more details. So definitely, if you haven't done so already, please uh, do that for not just the mission system one, but for the uh, other assignments, so you know exactly what you need to do for all uh, for all of your your, uh, your assignments. Uh, speaking of EBSCO, that's going to be my next video for you, uh, besides the. Uh, Besides the, the the weekly review of the readings, so I'll have that EBSCO review a uh, uh, video for you sometime next week. So it'll be the uh, the week right after uh, right after the few days right after Labor Day, and of course the screensavers uh, pop up. So let me, let's let's get back to Blackboard here. All right, here we go. Okay, so there's just a little bit of little bit of a sense of what the assignment is about, but of course more details are listed on the PDF assignment. So let's go ahead and open that up. We're going to come back to Blackboard in a little while, so I can better show you how to properly uh, insert right in your answers. But I've already got the uh, the assignment worksheet right here in the back, so let me open that up and let's see what this is about. So if you haven't seen this already, then definitely uh, make sure you get to this soon so you know exactly what you need to do. Now, uh, here's let me give you the, the quick objective as to what this is all about, and then I'll go over the specifics. What you're going to be doing with this uh, assessment, assignment, or SLO, student learning outcome, student learning objective, whatever the uh, uh, term du, du, du jour is these these days. What you're going to be doing is uh, an, engaging in critical thinking. That is, you're going to look at a specific set of documents, of items, of uh, of, of, of of sources, and you're to analyze them. That is, um, and this is something that that's uh, really uh, that's really big on the campuses, not just at Mesa, but uh, at, at Grossmont. The Southwestern's doing it up and down the state, and I'm pretty sure uh, schools across the country are doing uh, 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 similar uh, similar uh, things. 
So what you do is basically you play amateur historian. You look at a set of documents, you look at a set of files, and using your background, your expertise, your experience, what do you think is going on here? What are these items that what are these items that telling you? What are they saying to you? Now, um, the term is primary source, and uh, and and the other term is secondary source. So by primary source, uh, look at it this way: primary source is something like. When uh, Dr. King gave his, his famous I Have a Dream speech in 1963, uh, those were his ex exact words. Those are things that, uh, uh, those are things that, that are coming directly from, from him. Nobody else is uh, interpreting, well, Dr. King said this, Dr. King really means that, blah, blah, blah. No, it's what Dr. King is himself saying in 1963. Likewise, too, when let's say President uh, uh, Johnson, L LBJ, sends a document to uh, Robert McNamara, the uh, 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 the uh, defense secretary and LBJ, he was a uh, uh, he was a colorful person. Let, person. But let's put it that way. He didn't mince words, and he wasn't uh, and he wasn't averse to saying all kinds of uh, all kinds of uh, uh, nasty words for like. So let, I'm just going to play LBJ LBJ here. So don't get mad. Don't get upset. Don't go uh, rushing over to, uh, to my uh, Dr. Lopez, my chairman. I Professor Cañedo, he's mean. He's nasty. No, that's just an example here. So if LBJ says stuff to McNamara like you son of a bitch, you told me this, those bastards, and, and, and shit, and, and blah, 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 and uh, what the hell's the matter with you? Uh, uh, get your head out of, out, out of your butt. Uh, okay, you get the idea. So, uh, when you, if you see a telegram in which LBJ is using that type of language, that's a primary source because LBJ is talking directly to Robert McNamara, uh, more than likely arguing about something that happened with respect to the Vietnam War. So, the uh, the King example and the uh, LBJ example, and likewise too. Let's say if Father Sarah is writing to one of the priests in another mission, those are examples of primary sources. Now, secondary sources. Um, actually, yeah. Let, let me let me go ahead and do it this way. Secondary sources. That's basically that's essentially what we have here. So ancient Mexico, when Jacqueline Lathrop is writing about the uh, uh, about the Maya, about Teotihuacan, about uh, the Aztecs. So about the Olmecs. Uh, th that's her interpretation of various uh, sources, various writings pertaining to these, these di different cultures. So ancient Mexico is an example of a secondary source. Likewise, too, between the conquests, between the conquests, Micronales has various, uh, uh, whatever Mike writes, the, uh, that's an example of a secondary source. Whatever some of the other scholars have, those are also secondary sources. But you'll notice that in some cases, in between the conquests, there's some writings from, say, uh, President Polk. There's even something there from Abraham Lincoln when he was a congressman. Those are primary sources. So you understand the difference, everybody? If it's coming directly from that one person, it's an event happening at, at the time, that that's a primary source, but if someone else is writing about it and uh, putting his or her spin on things, that's a uh, that's a secondary source. So definitely uh, try to uh, distinct, try to uh, understand the key the key differences. And uh, what I'm going to show you right now are are examples of primary sources primary sources referring to the Calif the referring to the California mission system. And by primary source, we don't necessarily just mean um, writings or documents or 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 or, or, uh, or uh, statements, uh, letters from one person to another. This could also be paintings. So if we see a painting depicting life on the missions dating back to, uh, say, 1830, 1827, that's a primary source too. Um, uh, for example, when uh, 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 when Picasso had his uh, his famous paintings, those are also examples of uh, of, of, pri of primary source. So it's not just uh, it's not just written stuff. It's also a uh, paintings, artwork, music, uh, fo uh, uh, fo folklore, uh, jokes. E e e even those are all examples of primary sources. So uh, so I don't want to belabor that point too too much, but I think. Uh, I think, especially for those of you who were just uh, just coming coming out of a uh, high school and uh, and just starting to get your uh, I guess your feet wet, so to speak, in uh, uh, in the in in college and then later on university life, uh, you're going to come across these terms. So definitely, uh, that's one key key thing you need to keep in mind: the difference between primary source and also secondary source. Okay, now what do we do for this assignment? What's how is this going to work out? Well, there are four steps that that you need to do. So let's go each each step one 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 by one. The first step is to look over all the examples of primary sources located within this PDF file. So let's go ahead and just scroll down past, uh, uh, past 2, 3, and 4, and I'm going to show you what these primary sources are. 
and let me uh, make sure I get the uh, cursor going here. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's just by bypass all this real quickly here until we get to where it says Chicano Studies 141 Assessment, Primary Source Documents, and here are some primary sources. So I've got four from about page... Uh, I think it's about page four all the way to a page nine, page five to uh, nine, something to that, to that effect. But the first source is, is, is a painting. It's a painting taken from 1844, and it's a painting of, uh, of one of the uh, mission fires, Father Narciso du Duran. And uh, Father Duran looks like he's tending to an Indian, an Indian girl. And what I want you to do for this source is look at it, analyze it. What is happening here? What are the main themes go going on? Uh, what can what can you what can you uh, detect from the differences in status between Father Duran and the Indian girl? How is Father du Duran lo looking? What is his expression? How is the Indian girl looking? What is her expression? And look at the infer look at the stuff that's uh, behind him on the desk. What do we see on the desk? There's a cross. Looks like there's some there's some books. Obviously, it's, looks like the, uh, there's a Bible here. And and look at Father Father Duran's uh, a posture. Um, look look at look at the building. It looks like it's one of the mission buildings here. So so in other words, uh, I'm not going to tell you what to think about what's happening here. It's your job to say. Well, it, I'm asking you, what do you think is happening here? What's the message being uh, being set being uh, being sent here at this point in time? Is the mesh is 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 there a uh, a positive message? Uh, or a negative message, uh, and I think for maybe for those of you, uh, uh, and, and I'm just generalizing here. Maybe for those of you uh, who have a strong Catholic up upbringing, uh, uh, you, uh, you 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 went through all of the uh, all of the events, uh, the, the the communion, of course, uh, baptism, and uh, maybe from that perspective, you got a positive view of what Father Dudan is all about. But then maybe some of you might have different perspectives. Maybe you're not uh, uh, big fans of the Catholic Church. So you might be thinking that there's a negative view, that there's a themes of exploitation going on. These are just some examples. So again, I want you to draw upon your experience, your background, and also to anything you've read from other sources, anything else uh, that you've read, uh, th uh, that you read maybe, uh, maybe from this class, from other classes. And on that note too, um, in the Between the Conquest book, there's a great article, in fact, one of the later readings by Antonia Castaño, that's on page 67. She talks about the mission system. So if you want to go ahead and get an early jump on the readings and read Castaño's uh, section, then by all means, go ahead, go ahead and do that. Use the secondary sources to help you interpret what's happening in this primary source. So again, this painting of Father Duran, it's an example of a primary source. It's a painting from roughly the mission era, a little bit after the mission era, but pretty close. And then your job is to, is, is to simply tell me what you think is going on here <clears throat> uh, in, in this painting. Okay, uh, source two, this is another primary source. This is Father Jaime. Father Luis Jaime was a contemporary father, said uh, he's talking about what's happening in the uh, He's talking about what happened in the San Diego mission. Of course, San Diego was, was the first uh, first mission of the chain all the way up to Northern California. And Father Jaime has some really harsh words about the soldiers. Uh, remember, the uh, soldiers and the friars, even though ostensibly they're working for the same goal, let's put it this way, they went about the goals much differently. And that's what Castaneda talks about in the uh, Between the Conquest readings. And Father Jaime talks in more detail about this and doesn't mince words in a lot of the stuff that he says. So after you read uh, a secondary source, I'm sorry, primary source number two, then you interpret what do you think is happening here? What is Father Jaime trying to say? What's your interpretation of, what, of, what, of what's uh, go, go, uh, going on here? Who are the bad guys in all of this? Are the bad guys the soldiers? Or, the, uh, or maybe the bad guys are the Indians for, uh, for being heathens and, uh, and dirty and nasty, blah, blah, blah. Or are the, uh, are the bad guys the friars, the missionaries, because they're the ones who wanted to come here in the first place. So, uh, so, you, so, have, so think about some of those questions, and then, uh, and then you decide what you think the main points are, your impression of what Father Jaime is saying. Okay, primary source three is from a Frenchman. We have different perspectives. This is a Frenchman, Jean-Francois La, 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 La Perouse. And La, La Perouse talks about the mission system in, in, uh, in, uh, in Northern California, in, uh, uh, in the Car Carmel region. And during this time, a lot of uh, visitors from other parts of the world were coming to the missions, uh, mainly to... Uh, 
mainly to, uh, to, to, to rest, uh, to, to get more supplies, to, to, to trade. So uh, there's various accounts of, uh, of, of other Europeans uh, coming here talking about the mission system. And, uh, uh, and Monsieur, La, uh, La, <clears throat> Monsieur La, La, La Perouse, he's one of those who talks about what's happening here. So he has a little bit more, not uh, a little bit more of a, maybe an impartial view, but he too seems to have some, uh, some critical views about what's happening. And that's not a big surprise for everybody because remember, the Europeans, they had rivalries amongst each, each other. So it's not surprising if an Englishman came here and said, oh my gosh, those Spanish friars and soldiers, they're, they're nasty, they're vile, they're this. They're, they're, they're that, and I wouldn't be surprised the Frenchmen and maybe even some Russians who, who were visited might have also had similar views because of those imperial rivalries between the French, the Russians, the uh, the, the English, and of course the uh, and of course the Spanish by the end of the 18th century. So again, this is source three. It's uh, the French visitor La, La, uh, La, La Perouse talking about the car the. Uh, the Indians at the uh, at the treatment of the Indians at the Carmel mission, and the last primary source for for you is this painting here of uh, what appears to be happening or one of the, or a typical scene in mission property. <coughs> Excuse me, and uh, the uh, the Indians that is when they were learning how to become a, a Christian when they were in the process of uh, of not just to become becoming Christian but learning how to speak Spanish, uh, dressing like like Spaniards, growing uh, 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 growing Spanish crops, European crops, and also uh, and also using draft animals such, such as uh, uh, oxen, uh, horses, and other <clears throat> and other be beasts beasts of, of, of burden. Um, the Indian, the, the the neophytes, they were the ones responsible for doing, of course, a lot of the heavy work at the time. So this painting, which I think actually, this painting is actually from the, uh, I think it's from the 1960s or 1970s, but it's a reproduction of some of the paintings uh, that 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 had, that that had been evident back in, back in the uh, in the late 18th century and into the early 19th century. So your job here is to look at this painting and say, well, what's happening here? Uh, what is the mood of the what is the mood of the Indians? Are they happy here, or uh, do they like this, or are they being being exploited? So you decide what you think the main themes are, the main ideas are, as you look at this uh, as, as you look at this painting. So after you look at all of these four sources, the two paintings and the two writings, then go back to uh, <clears throat> go back to uh, to parts two and three and answer the questions. So part two, it's it's what's called a thesis statement. A thesis statement that is you're trying to prove a hypothesis, trying to prove a, a, a theory, and your thesis statement essentially is what is the statement which uh, says uh, that, uh, that I've got this theory, I've got this idea, this is what I'm trying to prove. But you have to back up your, your theory with supporting information. That's basically the same principle you're going to be using when you when you put together all your writing assignments. So the thesis statement in, in part two reads like this, or thesis, thesis question. Reads like like this. How do these sources, the sources being those four those four items I showed you, the two paintings and the two writings, how do these sources prove that the policies of the Spanish crown and Franciscan officials directly contributed to the cultural destruction of the California native populations as the mission system was being established? What you have to do is you have to try to prove that statement is is true. Uh, <clears throat> Or, or, or try to back up that, that try to back up that statement. So, in other words, in your own words, in at least four, four or five sentences, if you want to go more six, seven sentences, that's absolutely fine. So, based upon what you uh, saw in these four documents, again, the uh, Father Duran and, and uh, the Father D D Duran uh, 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 painting, the Indian labor painting, the Father Jaime Simon and the La Perouse statement, fr from those sources, how do those things? Uh, how do those things prove that this thesis statement or thesis question is actually true? So you don't have to rely exclusively on the four items that I showed you. If you want to rely on, on any things that you might have read from other sources, like between the conquest, by all means, go ahead, uh, go ahead and, and do that. So that's the first step. That's the first major thing you have to write. You have to answer. You have to uh, answer directly what the thesis statement or thesis question is uh, is asking you. Essentially, the same thing in part three. Uh, from all the sources that, that 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 you saw, again the two paintings and the two writings, what is a cause or what is a consequence uh, that was created by the California mission system? What was what, what was something that that you read or saw which led to the mission system 
or uh, or what was something that you saw or read which was re an end result of the mission system. So in other words, cause or consequence, something leading to or something that's an effect of, that's what you have to tell me in, in, in part in part three from uh, uh, from, from, from your readings, uh, that is especially your analysis of those four sources. And last but not least, describe one historic personality described in the event, and by event I mean the, the entirety of the California mission system. Uh, who was important from, from that from that period? Was it Father Serra? Or maybe Father Jaime? Maybe you got some French about Father Duran? Or maybe the French visitor? Or maybe the Indians? Or maybe uh, maybe some of the Indian people were some of the uh, significant personalities? So your choice. You tell me who you think was a really important personality. Uh, name that person and tell me why he or she was uh, significant. Uh, in the sources, you've got some people listed there. But if you want to go into uh, off the... Uh, off the reservation, so to speak. I mean, uh, uh, no pun intended, of course, with the whole Indian uh, uh, Indian theme going on here. But uh, uh, would any other source that maybe gives you some some information, by all means, go ahead and incorporate that and uh, uh, and mention that in number four. So, uh, so just to quickly backtrack here, stage one. Read the four documents, or look at the two paintings, and then read the two the two the the, the, the two writings. Uh, step two: answer or try to. Uh, Try to prove that the thesis statement is is actually true. Part three: uh, Give me a cause or consequence of the California mission system as represented by these uh, by these four sources. And part four: Tell me one person that's significant from the mission system and explain why he or she is significant. So once you have all your answers, now the next thing you have to do is how to actually insert them into Blackboard. So let's leave um. Let's leave the PDF file and go back into uh, go back in, uh, go back into Blackboard. So you are again at the assignment section, and here's what you what you need to do. And do this for all your assignments, everybody. When you're going to submit your assignment, what you need to do is uh, highlight, click the black link next to the uh, next to the pen, uh, the, the the paper ruler and pencil uh, uh, pencil uh, symbol right there. So uh, always click those big black uh, black links, and that takes you into the area where you're going to submit your answers. So. Uh, so in fact, let me just uh, yeah, let me hold it up here. Okay, sorry for the shaking here, but I want to make sure that you guys can see the cursor. Okay, so we'll click Mission System SLO. Okay, and here we go, ready to upload our answer. So this tells us what this uh, basic. This tells us the information, the uh, assignment information, the the points possible. So remember, we're on weighted totals. So uh, so if you get so so if, if you get an A, that'll put you up close to the uh, 100 point category. It's 10 percent, so it's going to be a total of of uh, if you get if, if you get. Uh, if your point total comes, say, to around 90, 10% of 90, so that's nine points that's going to be put into your uh, your your total grade calculations for the for the entire uh, the entire session. All right. So when you're ready to type in your answer, just go down here to part two, uh, and then click the write submission box because what you're going to be doing is that when you're writing your answers, you you click write submission. But when you're submitting files like you're going to do for the EBSCO book review and US Mexico war paper what you do is click the browse my computer uh, button to 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 uh, locate your file from your computer but for this one click write submission and here we go so all we need to do is uh, enter our information right here and you can clearly see there's a numbering box so you can click that and we'll go ahead and click that here and even though it's uh, it's one two even though the numbers on the assignment on the worksheet are 2 3 and 4 if you want to use 2 3 and 4 or 1 2 and 3 i know the sequence that that, that, that you're using so don't get too concerned that i'm going to get confused or, or anything uh, no obviously I, I won't so uh whatever numbering system you want to do if you want to do 2 3 and 4 or 1 2 and 3 that's fine i know the sequence so once you would do let's go, let's say you want to go with a 1 2 and 3 sequence so in number 1 just type in your answer to the thesis statement question uh the doc documents prove blah 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 uh, this 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 and that and then when you're ready when you're ready with that you know just click uh, return <clears throat> I'm sorry okay, oop okay actually let me, let me just uh, type in a sample here um, <clears throat> okay I'll just I'll put a oh I, I don't know um, okay I be believe that okay and then blah 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 okay and then just click return all right then we have number two and then number two of course you just answered the question about the uh, cause or consequence and then you can you can put uh, I uh, 
felt that blah 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 and then and then for number three or <clears throat> which of course is the uh, one about the historical personality then you could put, type in the one personality blah 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 and then you're ready to go so once you once you finish off with that then that that's it you're, you're ready to go you're good to go um, in the comments section, you, you can put anything there, like Professor, here are my answers. But this is optional. You don't have to worry too much about this section. And then once you're ready, click the blue submit uh, button. So always, everybody, uh, uh, when you want to turn turn it turn it into me, always click the blue submit button, and then then it, then it goes into uh, into my Blackboard plat platform. And then I, uh, I I look at that when uh, I'm ready to uh, when I'm ready to look over your entries, and then. Um, and then uh, great, great your work. Okay, well, as usual, this uh, video ran ran kind of long, so we're up on twenty five minutes. So I'll go ahead and and, and I'll go ahead and, and stop it here. Uh, but hopefully, this explained everything uh, uh, everything in terms of what the SLO is all about, what you what you need to do. Any questions pop up about anything? Uh, definitely let me know. And like I said in previous videos, get into the habit of using Messages for Professor, and don't contact me at my email in, anymore. I want all class communications kept within Blackboard. So if you write to me by Messages for Professor, uh, I, like like I've said in in, um, in the syllabus and in previous uh, in previous videos, you write to me and I will reply to you in a timely manner within a 24 hour uh, period. Especially uh, especially of course it's if it's during the uh, regular Monday through Friday school week. Okay, well that's it from here. That's it from the uh, uh, French Valley uh, Winchester home uh, head, head headquarters. Uh, uh, you guys have a nice week weekend coming up, and I'll see you guys again ne next week with another video.